God bless you and uh, good afternoon. This is Pastor Roland uh, here from Pearsall Calvary Temple. Listen, uh, today I want to talk about something that I experienced. And it was in, in a dream that the Lord gave me about, say, about four or five days ago. And, as well, and it was very vivid, very vivid dream. And I believe that the Lord was speaking to me to speak to the churches around us. But before I do that, I want to read a scripture because it's in the prophet Joel. And the word of God said in the, in the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse uh, 28. He said, and after this, I will pour out my spirit on all kinds of people of flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And young men will see visions. And at the time, I will pour out my spirit also on male slaves and female slaves. I believe that the Lord is um, speaking to us through dreams and also through visions, amen, and prophecy. But I want to tell you about a dream that I had about, like I was saying, like four or five days ago, and it was very vivid. Well, the dream came like this to me, and I know that the Lord was speaking to me. Because the dreams seem so real. And when they're real like that, something that you can't forget because they records in your heart. Amen? So this was a dream. I was dreaming that me and my wife were standing outside in the building. And this building had a very, very big picture window on it. But uh, when I was looking at the window, it was just clear. And then all of a sudden I looked to my, to my right side, but I looked up to the sky and I saw something coming down from the sky and it seemed like it was a uh, balloons uh, like a rosary balloons like you know sometimes they make rosaries out of balloons and, and a cross and but this thing was coming down from the sky and on it there was a man riding on it and this man got off of it and uh, right in front of us he just passed by and went inside this um, this building the ones we were talking about that one that I told you earlier, they had a big picture window. So the the picture window, uh, and all suddenly this man just appeared on the window, and he was moving the curtains to the side, and he had a Bible in his hand. And uh, and me and my wife were standing there, and we were looking at him, and we were like, I wonder what he's doing, what's going on. So all of a sudden the 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 dream changed a little bit. And then we walked into this building. We were inside the building. And uh, to my left, uh, as soon as we walked in, there were benches, and it looked like a church. And I'm pretty sure it was a church. But then uh, my wife was on her knees, and she couldn't see what was ahead because she was on her knees, and the benches were, like, uh, above or, or below, yeah, above her head. And uh, she couldn't see. But I was standing there, and all suddenly I heard a man crying. He was crying in his dreams. I mean, uh, not in his dream, but he was crying as he was praying. And I looked over and this man was laying down on the floor. And he was reading the Bible at the same time, but he was crying at the same time. I said, Lord, what is this? But he was an old man crying. And then all suddenly I saw another man lay down on the floor and then he had the Bible with him. And he was also reading the Bible, but he was crying at the same time. Then all suddenly, out of nowhere, you know, everything turned for the worse. You know, these old men, they started connecting together as a sexual sin. And it was horrible, it was ugly. And then all suddenly, I saw another person come in. And they were all jumping in. And then I saw women coming in, jumping in. Into this big, uh, ugly sexual thing that was happening right before my eyes. And I kept looking at my wife, but my wife couldn't see anything. But I kept looking, and she kept looking at me like, what's going on? And I said to my, you don't want to see what's going on right now here in this in this church. Everybody is jumping in, and they're having all this sexual uh, thing going on. Like an orgy. It was ugly. It was terrible. And, and then I... I was crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, why are you showing me this? What's going on? 
And all suddenly it just came to my senses. I started getting up and started rebuking. I started telling the people, you know what? You're all going to go to hell. You better change your ways and repent of your sins. Because this is an abomination before the, the, the Lord's eye. So stop what you're doing in the name of Jesus. And all suddenly this man just jumped out of nowhere, but he was close. Besides the other people where they were all naked and they were old, ugly. And then this man tried to pull me in into that. And I told him, no, in the name of Jesus, started rebuking him in the name of Jesus. Then all of a sudden I felt like I was being choked out of wind. And then I felt like I couldn't speak anymore. But I felt my inner spirit inside interceding for me and praying and rebuking these demons that were trying to attack me. And then all of a sudden I felt, I felt peace and everything just let me go. And then all of a sudden when I woke up, I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Well, it's been five days and God has revealed what's going on. And God is showing me that what's going on in the churches right now, there's a lot of fornication and there's a lot of adultery on the altars. People, the preachers that, that are preaching the word of God or actually that are married or having an affair with other women. And also, preachers that are not married, evangelist, prophet, or whatever you are, worship leader, I don't, I don't know what it is, but if you are having sexual relationship with somebody and you're going on top of the altar, let me tell you, you don't know what it wastes you. And you better repent of your sins and change your ways and ask God to forgive you. Because if you don't repent of your sins, you better watch out because God's wrath is about to fall upon you. Because you are not being a good example to the people that God has sent you to take care of. And the Bible says, if you make one of my little ones trip or fall, it will be worse for you to be face to face with me. So we need to take care of the altars. There's a lot of abomination going on right now. There's evangelists out there that are going out there preaching the word of God and actually having women. Going out with women and not being faithful with their husbands, I mean with their, with their wives or husbands. Either way, it doesn't matter. But I'm telling you, that's what God is telling me. That we need to repent because this is happening all over the world right now. There's abomination in the churches because of sexual sin and, and fornication and all that. There's even homosexuals and lesbians out there on the altar bringing the Word of God and initially praising the Word of God. Do you, seriously, do you think that God receives that kind of worship? No, He does not receive that worship. That's an abomination. A lot of people, like we, like I said earlier, they're not full of God. They're full of themselves. That's what's going on. And God's wrath is about to fall on people. So this is a warning to all the churches around us. Repent or else. Amen. Change your ways while it's time. You're still breathing. Your heart is beating. Repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. We cannot be doing these kind of things. I'm telling you. Please repent and change your ways. Because we're going to wind up in hell. If we die today, tomorrow, doing these kind of things, it's not promised to you. We're not going to wind up in heaven, I'm telling you right now. You're going to wind up in a place that you wish you never had been. Because you cannot play with God. God, God is a God of justice. He's a God of love and mercy and a lot of compassion. And His grace upon us is sufficient for us. But we cannot be playing with God. So I'm telling you, if you're a minister, if you're a pastor, or you're a teacher, or a prophet, an evangelist, or a missionary, or whatever it is that you're doing for the Lord, do it with all of your heart. And stop doing what you're doing before it's too late. God is speaking. God is speaking today. He's very serious about this. Why would He show me a dream? And why would He show others, pastors, dream? The same vivid dreams to others. Why? Because this is happening in the body of Christ. And nobody's preaching or teaching on it or, or telling the truth. 
And I tell, I thank God because He has given me a spirit of boldness to tell you the truth. Not because I want to tell you, it's because I love you. That's why we care for you. Stop doing what you're doing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not about you. It's all about God and it's about Jesus Christ, what He did for us in that cross. Amen? And stop boosting about yourself, how much you make and what you do. Not about that. It's about Jesus Christ. They're hurting people out there. They're dying. They're suffering. They're in anguish. They're in addictions. They're uh, oppressed. They're being depressed by the enemy. And we are here speaking about all other things besides repentance. We need to repent and change your ways and come back to the Lord. For He is waiting. He is a just God and a merciful God full of love and compassion. And if you confess your sins to Him, He is just to forgive you for all of your sins. Simple as that. But do it with a sincere heart and not play around with God because He's not a toy. Amen? You cannot be playing with God. I'm telling you. I am a pastor too and I'm aware of all these things that are happening around. Amen? But I keep myself as much as pure as I can. I'm not perfect and I will never be perfect. The only one that's perfect is the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is the most perfect man in the world who is trying to be more like Him. Amen? And we're not here to deceive the people of God. We're here to teach them the principles of what God wants them to learn and what God wants them to do for His glory. And that's it. Because there is a lot of abominations what's going on in the churches right now. There's a lot of uh, sexual sin God going on. is adultery and fornication everywhere. And you... If you're fornicating and you're committing adultery, you do not belong on the altar of the Most High God. Get off and let somebody out that is truthful preach the Word of God. Because people are dying out there. Do not be an instrument of the enemy, Satan. If you're living this way, you're being used by the enemy to destroy God's creation. And when you destroy God's creation, because you're letting the enemy use you, God's going to destroy you too. I believe him, because there is a hell like there is a heaven. Amen. So we need to change our ways. Please, please repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. Confess your sins to God. Say, yeah, God, I sinned against you. Please forgive me. I fornicated or I committed adultery and I did evil, like you said. But please forgive me, Lord. I want to be truthful with you. I want to do the right thing. I want to be an instrument that that you can use a vessel that you can pour out your treasure in so I can pour out to those who are in need. We need to do this. I'm telling you, it's, it's an exhortation from God and it's a warning from God because He loves you. God does not want to see anybody hurt. Amen. Change your way. Do the right thing and then the blessings will follow you. You don't have to look for the blessings. The blessings will come to you and they will follow you. Do the right thing. I'm telling you. Please. Change your ways. Repent of your sins. And ask God to forgive you. All Everything's been paid already at the cross. All of your sins has been nailed to the cross already. You are free. Amen. Free. But use your freedom for God and for the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave you freedom. Freely He gave you, freely give out to others. Bring those who are, are oppressed, who are being bonded by the enemy. Break the chains. He has given you all authority and all power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 10, 1 says that He has given His, his servant, His disciples, the, the authority to cast out devils and to heal all kinds of diseases. Matthew 18, 18, He said, Whatever you will bind here on earth will be bounded by you in heaven. And whatever you lose here on earth will be loosed by Him in heaven. You have authority. Luke chapter 10, verse 18 and 19, He said He has given you power over, over serpents and, and scorpions. So you have the power and you have the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're preaching the Word of God, living in sin, you're not under the authority. You're, on, you're under only the, under the power, but not under the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's two different things. We want to preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit because the Word of God will break chains and will break people free from bondage. And that's what God wants from us. 
please guys, pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists, missionaries around the world, please do the will of God. This world is perishing. Wake up. We need to wake up. We need revival. We need to be preaching the word of God. We need to be preaching more of Jesus. Jesus is the main topic of everything. Then we need to be teaching on repentance. People repent and turn away from your sins. Amen. And we need to be teaching in baptism of the and waters. We need to be teaching in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pastors, preachers, teachers, preach this. Preach more of Jesus. Not of, of prosperity. Prosperity comes after we teach and we preach the truth of God. And when they receive it, they will prosper. That's what the Word of God says. Amen. Guys, I love you. And I know this message that God has given me is for all of us. Not only for y'all, but for me too. Let's be humble and sincere and preach the Word of God. Bring in more souls. Go out there fishing and fish them out and bring them to the kingdom of God. Man, God wants them to come to His table. God wants them to sit down and eat the bread, the manna that came from heaven. That is Jesus, the Word of God. that will give nourishment to our bodies. Amen. I'm not talking about physical bread because the bread that they ate in the desert was uh, Moses. They died. But this is the bread of life. If you eat of this bread, you're going to live forever. And also, if you drink of this water, this living water, you will never thirst again. Come to the table of your Father. He is waiting for you. He is waiting for you. He wants to eat with you. He wants to dine with you. He wants His children to be there together, all in unity and love. Psalms 133 says that we unite together in one in unity, all together, all the churches, that God will descend a blessing from there forevermore. Amen. We will rejoice in His presence. Guys, I love you all. I love you with my, all of my heart. Please be obedient to the Lord. I'm telling you, He wants to bless you in abundantly, but we are holding the blessings. Be obedient in every area. Be obedient to your church. Be obedient to your pastor. Be obedient in your tithes and giving. Amen. That that's what would open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessings over you that you're not going to be able to contain it. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and 11. God wants to bless you. And I thank you for those who are listening right now and they're going to apply the word of God. Amen. If you see somebody doing something wrong, you have the right to go and exhort them. Tell them you better stop what you're doing or else. Tell them, do not be afraid. God is with you. There's nothing wrong for you correcting your pastors, your leaders, if you see something wrong. God honors that. But do it in a good way, in a way that God will show you to do it. Amen. Guys, I love you again. I can't never stop telling that I love you because I love everybody. I want to have the heart of Jesus. I want to love everybody the same way. I want everybody to prosper. And I want everybody to go to heaven. We want to see each other in heaven and rejoice forever and ever. But if we're doing these things, we need to stop. Stop now. This is a warning. God, if you look and you're seeing this because God is speaking to you. Because He cares for you dearly. Amen. Just repent. Go down on your knees and ask God, please forgive me, Lord. Make me a new person again. I don't want to do these things anymore. And God will help you. He will lift you up when you're down. Praise God. Praise God for you. I pray for you and I will be praying for you every single day till God does something great in your life. You got a praying pastor here that loves everybody. We're praying for this city to connect together with others, to connect in unity as a one. We want to see the glory of God do something great for Prayer South Texas. And not only this Pearsall, Texas, about our neighbors around us. If we catch on fire, they will catch on fire too for the Lord. There are souls out there that are getting lost. They need to be set free from prisons. Jesus said in John 8, 32, when you know the truth, the truth is going to set you free. And then John 8, 36, he said, he who the Son of Man sets free, is free indeed. We've been set free, so let's go out there and set other people free. We have the power and the authority. God is, God is backing you up. 100% if you do His will. 
I love you guys. And you have a very blessed day. And share this message with somebody that needs to hear it. There is hope in Jesus. Amen. And another thing, love one another as He loved us. Amen. And love others, those people who hurt you. Learn how to forgive. Ask for forgiveness. Love like Jesus. Love like you've never been hurt before. Amen. Because we hurt Jesus and He still loves us no matter what. Love you guys. I'll be praying for you. And watch God do great things for you. God bless you. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, I bless you. Amen.